When I was 20 years old, I decided that I was a world traveler. Now, mind you, I had only been to Mexico and Canada at that point, but I knew I was world traveler material. I was like one of those American Idol kids who thinks he's a star, but he's never actually sung in front of people. <laughs> but this world traveler, I knew what world travelers do is they go on daring adventures. So I set off to Europe to one of, on one of those backpacking trips for six weeks all by myself. Trips where you take those, those ridiculous photos in front of international landmarks. <laughs> And my journey was going to be begin in Spain because I had one semester of college Spanish, and of course I needed to try it on. This is a photo of me in, from, in front of the Alcala Gate, scared like you wouldn't believe. I was in total culture shock. I knew at that moment that I was a stranger in a foreign land, that an ocean separated me and my family, and I had a return ticket six weeks later, and that these guys, I think, were making fun of me, but I couldn't understand a word they were saying. <laughs> It's a metaphor I'd like to use for what I'm experiencing as the executive director at SVP Portland. As we go into community change effort, moving from funding individual nonprofits to funding what a problem that we saw, that one in three kids in our community is unprepared for kindergarten. What does it mean to be unprepared for kindergarten? This is simple stuff. This is not a high bar. This is kids who don't know how a book even works. These are, these are children who, who don't know even the concept of a letter and that it has a sound and numbers. We wanted to get all kids ready in Portland. We've stepped up into a community change role. We learned that there are 13 age-appropriate books for every kid in a middle class or affluent home, 13 books for every kid, and one book for every 300 kids in a poor neighborhood. That's all of us plus some sharing one book. We also learned that if you invest $15,000 a year in four- and five-year-olds for high-quality preschool, you get a return to the society of $200,000, a 13 to 1 return. So this was good information for a bunch of, uh, a bunch of motivated partners, and, and we really jumped in because we were tired of funding isolation, individual nonprofits doing their own thing. We really wanted our community to align behind change for these children. It's important in these times of scarcity that we really line up because the, the problems are especially scarce for the kids. And this is the very DNA of SVP, unleashing potential and solving problems in nonprofits and communities. So we've been on this journey for about a year now. We've added to our grant making and capacity building this other, this other model of convening partners to create strategy, which I recognize is like herding cats, right? <laughs> our Intel retirees are like convulsing down there trying to herd, herd cats. But it's also critical in times of scarcity that we bring the stakeholders together to make change. It's not just about aligning, it's about lining up the community behind a strategy and a plan of action. This has made us quite kind of unfamiliar travelers in this space. As grant makers like all of you, it's a pretty privileged position to, to pick the grants we want to make and the organization we want to work with. We hold all the cards in those relationships. As unfamiliar travelers in, in, this, in this realm, we're really, really bringing people together and trying to politically move people along. We have uh, you know, people who sort of look at us curiously, the locals, if you will, think we're quite, quite the curiosity. Like these folks in Austria, who thought it would be really fun to pump me full of blutwurst and, and beer and then dress me up in their lederhosen. <laughs> but being unfamiliar travelers also comes with, with real, uh, it gives everyone a fresh perspective. Uh, both the traveler and the locals alike get to see the territory in a whole new way. There are benefits that we have as, as people on the front lines here to see the bright spots in, in the community for young children. We get uh, real insights about what's working and where we need to spend our attention, and where we need to focus to make real change in the community. This community change agent, this setting a goal and trying to bring everyone together, has also called out real strengths in our partnership. For me in Europe, I learned that I was a problem solver. I learned that how to make low-budget uh, laundering techniques in European trains. <laughs> yes, those are my socks in the upper left corner there. For our partners, they're smart, successful people, professionals in the community who want to see change happen. When others see 60% of the kids who are not in preschool, uh, we see a real un untapped market. There's real strengths that are called out in these times of scarcity. And these kids really need us. Because a kid unprepared for kindergarten also becomes a stranger in a foreign land. A kid who shows up as a stranger to books and to words and to crisscross applesauce is just unfair it's expensive, and it's avoidable. We in Portland have really stepped up to change this for kids. 
I invite you to come down and see what we're doing. I invite you to invest if you're so moved. But most importantly, I invite you to think little and do something big for these children. Thank you. Yeah.